So welcome to another episode and I am here in this unique place called Mamasa here in West Sulawesi. Join me. Over the last few days, Kezia and I have been relaxing and recharging our batteries in Dongala, which has some really nice snorkeling and a fantastic views and beaches. We need to summon the energy for the next big adventure across the island of Sulawesi. It's a very, very miserable, windy, rainy morning here in Dongala. Now we will drive to Toraja. And it's very long, it's gonna take us three days to get there. But we're gonna stop in a place called Mamasa, which is a mini version of Taraja. And you can actually drive to Taraja from this place, but the road looks in such bad condition and I'm, I don't know, I'm just a bit scared of driving on really bad quality roads on my bike, especially when it's fully loaded with a passenger. And I just watched a YouTube video of someone who's driven down there recently in a truck, I think or a car, and, and even that, the road just looks scary. I'm gonna get the bike loaded up now, and then we make a move. Two days, we arrive in Mamasa. Three days, we arrive in Toraja. We will leave this place and head to West Sulawesi. This is the town of Dongala. This used to be the capital city of central Sulawesi. And you can tell it has some very, very old colonial style buildings because when the Dutch were here they were used this as the, the main port and then there was some damage done to the harbour and then they moved the central administration to Palu. As we leave the province of central Sulawesi we enter into the flat lowland areas of the rarely visited western province of this island. We are greeted by massive palm oil plantations. This is one of the sad things about this region is it's just palm oil plantation everywhere. As far as the eye can see, all I can see is the palm trees. It's been seven hours of non-stop driving through these endless plantations and we are very hungry. Well, I think we managed to find a warong with the best view. Ever. The long day of hot, sweaty, flat, lowland, boring roads draws to an end, and we are both very tired. Before our ascent into the West Sulawesi Highlands, we need to rest our weary heads. We found a really nice place somewhere on the road between. Palu and Mamuju. It's not bad. Yeah. For 175,000 a night. Yes. We made it eight hours late. Eight hours on the road, but we made it. Hey. It's a new day, the weather is glorious, and it's no more lowlands. As we penetrate the interior of West Sulawesi, the landscape dramatically changes to these incredible valleys with its emerald green jungles, winding roads and beautiful rivers. Scenery is just wonderful here and it's unspoiled. The climate here is much more temperate and mild. It makes this journey much more comfortable. I'm just surprised at how nice the road is. I don't want to jinx it, but so far this road is excellent. Wow, we're really on the top of the mountain right now. Aha, here we go, Mamasa, to the right. You're really getting a view of what life is like in these little villages. It just seems to be a very slow pace of life indeed out here. 
We're definitely getting up into the highlands now because the trees are no longer the tropical trees and more the, the trees that like the cold. 30k for this. 30k. What do we got? Salak, Rambutan and then Mangosteen. There's been a landslide and the road is very muddy. One thing that everybody told us about Mamasa comes true. The nicely surfaced roads quickly turn into a muddy mess. They're really spending a lot of money on this road though. It's really not nice, but we make it through unscathed. Fuck. Holding on for dear life. Fuck. Everything feels just a little bit different up here. Even the fuel stations are not what you normally see. This is the first. <laughs> Hello. I've never seen one like this before. Quick break, have some fruit, some water. Kezia's resting. Let you. Ramble time. And then, out of nowhere, it hits us. Mamasa. Hidden deep in the highlands of West Sulawesi is a place like no other. Not mentioned in any guidebooks or social media, this area is just totally off the radar. And the people here live such an isolated life. Sometimes this place is known as Taraja's little sister, but as we are about to find out, Mamasa is special and unique in its own right. And look at this amazing view of the rice fields here. This looks incredible, absolutely incredible. Look at that. I have no idea where I'm going, just getting lost. I love it. After the long ride sat on the back of the bike, Kezia really needs a massage, and we find the only therapist in town. Ah, Spa Bali, yeah, yeah. This is the one. Okay, makasih ya, Pak. Wow, the people are super friendly around here. They don't see many foreigners at all, that's for sure. Good morning, we are about to explore this area called Mamasa. Kezia took a massage here in Mamasa and we had no idea where to go, what to do, what to do anything. Very little information online about Mamasa. The owner here has agreed to take us around today to visit some of the old Tonkanan houses. It's going to be interesting. We were led up the outskirts of the main town, across rivers and through small villages. The roads in Mamasa are definitely some of the worst I've seen in Sulawesi. But for the local people, this is totally normal and part of everyday life. But for this amateur adventure rider on a big heavy bike, it's just too much. go up and up and up, the road just gets worse until we reach what we came here for. Hello. An astonishing traditional village oh. nestled up in the highlands of Mamasa. A very scary drive coming up here. Very slippery, very steep gravel. This particular village here, they all have the traditional house. I don't think I've been anywhere quite like this, actually. It is surreal that people are living like this up in the highlands here. Almost feels like you're part of some kind of tribe here, really. I, I really mean that. The way that the people live here is very different to what I've ever seen before. This is truly traditional village. And this is one of the oldest Tonkanan houses here in Mamasa. 
hundreds of years old. This house looks much more like the old Toraja houses. The new style Toraja houses are not like this. Ah, it's amazing walking through this super traditional Mamasa village. This is not a tourist attraction. Yeah, look at that. So old. So in the construction, there's no nails. It's all just joined together. This is the foundation. <laughs> oh, that's a very old house, that one. It must be a few hundred years old. It's amazing. People living here still. In Italy, in Italy. Ah, Italy, very cool. Oh, wow. Oh. And that is the skin of a bottle that I've made into a rope. We get to see these ladies weaving in the most traditional way. This is called tenon and it is beautiful hand-woven material made for ceremonies. I just really love the fact that the house is being used as the holder for the cloth. It's amazing. The house can be used for anything. What do you think? Amazing. Yeah? People are super nice. Yeah. Bye bye. Wow. Really. It's just amazing how people are living in this really traditional village. It is a very, very unique place. We go back down the broken road and our next stop is the oldest cemetery in Mamasa. Wow, Lama. We're in the middle of Mamasa province, somewhere way off the main road. This place is called Tedong Tedong Bala and it's where the highest class of Mamasa people were laid to rest. Unlike Taraja, the Mamosa people are not buried in caves or on cliff sides. Their coffin is placed in a house like this. So here we have some of the oldest coffins in Sulawesi. They are very, very well preserved. Comparing to Taraja, these are much in much, much better shape. And I presume it's because they're underneath this roof. In Taraja, they're just left hanging from a cave, water dripping on them all the time. These are just in amazing condition. These are around 500 years old and full of bones. It's such a unique place and a unique opportunity to visit this rarely visited place in Indonesia. It's not far from Tana Taraja, but hardly anyone comes here, not many tourists. They have a unique view of death, just like Taraja, but just a little bit different. And I can only think how high class in the society you must have to be to be buried inside a buffalo and inside a house like this. The funerals that took place to bury these people must have been an absolute incredible event. This place is just fascinating, equally as fascinating as Taraja. And that's what this channel is all about, is finding hidden gems like this. Our next stop in Mamasa is another traditional village called Taupe. And behind me is one of the traditional houses and this one is very special because it's absolutely covered in all of these carvings. You can see in there, it's amazing. The detail is fantastic and the meaning that goes behind it. And here we have the horse. The horse has a big symbolic meaning here in Mamasa, much more than it does in Taraja. In Taraja, usually there is the head of a buffalo, but here in Mamasa, it's always a horse. And you can see this roof is much bigger and longer than the houses in Taraja. The style is altogether very different. And they always have a drum as well. This drum is to, to inform everybody that somebody has died. They really are fantastic pieces of, of art, you know? Amazing. Oh, what a place Mama Sarah is. 
The owner of the house is called Kakak Eni, and he has lived here his entire life with his whole family and his family before him. Nama saya Sam. Sam. Dari dari Inggris. Oh, dari Inggris. Asli sini ya. Iya. Taupe, Taupe, ya. Kampung Taupe. Iya, Kampung Taupe. Ya. Berapa umur? Delapan lima. Delapan lima. Wow. Eighty five. Kalau umur? Tiga puluh lima. Tiga puluh lima. Ya. Masih remaja. Still a teenager. Kakik Eni tells me about the meaning behind the horse. Kerbau, kaya, kuda, kuat. Ah, so the horse is for strength and the buffalo is for, for rich, for, for wealth. Wow, okay, now I learned something. Hey Kakek, bilang hello YouTube. Hello YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Say hello to YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> hello. <laughs> People in the village don't always dress like this, but since they are welcoming guests, I am invited to dress the same. I'm gonna get changed now. They've convinced me to uh, to wear some traditional clothes. I'm gonna dress like that. <laughs> I feel very honored to be welcomed into the village in this way. This is definitely not something you do every day. A very unique experience that I will never forget. Very comfortable, it's really comfortable actually, yeah. I think I'm gonna stay here. Yeah, really, I'm being serious, this is really good, yeah. So this was definitely the last thing that I thought I was gonna be doing today. And it just shows you that expect the unexpected went on the road. But really, this has been an amazing experience here in Mamasa. And especially this Kampung Taupe, amazing, really. This is, honestly, one of the most memorable things I think I've done while being in Indonesia. He also tells me the reason why the buildings seem so randomly aligned. They actually follow the flow of the mighty Mamasa River and the rice bands are aligned perpendicular to the main houses. This is completely different to Taraja, which are always aligned in a north-south alignment and the rice houses following the same alignment. So this is the metal of a meteorite, a fallen meteorite. It must be so rare to have a sword like this. <laughs> what an amazing experience this has been, staying in this very, very small village here in Mamasa called Taupe. All I can say is that I really, really was not expecting Mamasa to be like this. This place is special in its own right. It deserves to be known for what it is. Another place in Sulawesi, another place worth visiting. It really is amazing. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. We have now been invited to the house of the Bupati which in Indonesia is the governor of this regency. However, he is no longer alive. And for the last 10 months, his family have been taking care of the body and the coffin while they prepare for the funeral. And this is all the temporary structure ready for the Rambu Solo. I'm gonna take off my shoes now. This is the Tonkara. Hello, hello, Pat. Hello, yeah. Oh, but, oh, but nego de parindi. Oh, but nego de parindi. Very similar to Toraja, but different. First thing is this red. Oh, this red you see behind me. This is not the same as Toraja. And then the, the coffin behind me, it's been there for around 10 months and it has the head of a horse. And I've never seen that before, not in Taraja. So there's definitely some big differences between the two cultures. Similar, but different. We were very lucky to be around when the family used these ceremonial gongs. 
This is to alert the local community that somebody has died and they do this every day at dusk. So that is the Tonkaran house in Mamasa. Very, very unique experience. Unique. Yeah. To end our day, we are taken to the highest viewpoint in Mamasa, Buntu Kepa. Kelapa, jahe, jahe, gula merah, mama brown sugar, santan, santan. and santan. coconut milk. Oh, okay. sehat nih. Terima kasih. Ini kayak udin. Traditional drink from Mamasa. Mamasa. The drink can make our body warmer. Hmm. Now I've been roped into singing some karaoke. It was the best way to spend our last evening with some of the kindest, most hospitable people I've met while being in Indonesia. Makasi, everybody. Terima kasi. Yes. Makasi banyak, Pak. Sama sama. Terima kasi banyak. Thank you so much for taking us around, showing us everything. It's been great. So happy that you took a massage. Yeah, yeah I'm a massage. Dia tidak akan bawa masaj, kita mungkin tidak... Tidak ketemu! Tidak ada sama Tuhan, iya, kita bertemu. <coughs> Mamasa is the most underrated place I've been on this island. A very, very good morning to you. We are about to leave Mamasa right now and head to Taraja. The people here in Mamasa say the road is fine, it's good now. But the videos I've seen don't really fill me with much confidence. What I gather from the Mamasa people is they are so used to having such bad roads that anything, anything that's better than broken rocks is classed as a good road. I'm a little bit nervous about this drive that we have today. It's around 10 o'clock in the morning and bike's packed and we'll be on our way very soon. <laughs> He's very friendly. Coming to Bali, yeah? So you not get killed. <laughs> <laughs> He's so expensive. Yeah, this one's this one very like expensive. Maybe 500 million. Maybe. Yesterday, We've been really impressed by the kindness of these people that was um, guiding us around and the family is amazing and we're going to buy them some groceries. We don't know what to buy them. We wanted to buy them a gift before we left and they didn't have any vegetables when we were there so we're going to buy them a big bag of vegetables and chilies and things like that. So we bought them uh, some fruits, oil and some other things like, uh, like sugar, like um, veggies, something. Eggs. They're gonna be happy. Yes. Hello. I'm husband sister. Ah, hello. Nama saya Sam. Erna. Ini nonton videonya. Oh, <laughs> ini sama. 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 sampai jumpa Ini sama. Ini sama. Ini sama. Ini sama. Ini sama. Ini sama. Ini Wow. Well, that was a nice goodbye. Really nice. Okay, that's it. Now we go left. This is the new road. And this is the way to get to Taraja. Everyone's told us it's a good road. But I think their, their definition of a good road and my definition of a good road is different. Goodbye, Mamasa.
Luckily, there's been no rain. It's just very dusty and still slippery, but I think it's okay so far. Oh my God, that's a bit of a bad bit there. My worst nightmare comes true about the roads. It's very steep very loose gravel on this type of surface you cannot hesitate you cannot stop you cannot turn around We have made our commitment to this route. We have to keep going, even though this is the most difficult road I have ever driven on, and it feels like an endless ascent to the top of this mountain. Oh my god. Oh. That was scary. Fucking hell. Wow, look at where we are. So tingy. Fuck. Oh my god. Wow. 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 What goes up must come down. I'm gonna find the right path to go down. But the problem is when you're going down, you cannot change your mind. You just have to go. And this is the most scared I have ever been while on a bike. This is white knuckle driving. One wrong move, one hand too tight on the brake and a locked up wheel mean a fall on this heavy bike with a passenger. I don't even want to think of the consequences of sliding uncontrollably down these roads in this remote location. But one thing is for sure, we are getting down this mountain one way or another. Oh my god, so fucking scary. Everybody telling us this road is bagus. <laughs> this is good for the Mamasa people, I think. This means good. Okay now, it's fucking never ending. This road, really, it never fucking ends. Stop. So that's it for this episode. I really hope you have enjoyed exploring Mamasa with us. Join me next week where we will be finally reaching Ashfal and I will revisit the incredible lands of Taraja and witness the unbelievable beauty of Olon Valley. Don't miss it. <laughs>